So there was a real culture, I understand, of gambling here on the beach, too. There was mm. a lot of bookies and that sort there of thing. Yes, there was a lot. And it was open. And then Keith Bauer came down. He was brought down by uh, one of our mayors to close down everything in 1950. But you could go out. I roomed with a guy by the name of Jack Gross, whose brother was a big-time bookie in New York. I had never been inside a bookie place in my life. I had never gambled in my life. But because of him, they used to have a limousine pick us up, take us out to Green Acres and places like that. Those were the gambling places. And people were always dressed up. And they didn't use chips. They used cash at that time. But everybody made a dollar when they had gambling. The taxi cab drivers used to run out and open the doors for you. The doorman, everybody was nice. and Everybody made a dollar. The girls that worked at Wolfie's, there were two Wolfie's. There was one on uh, Lincoln Road and uh, Collins, and there was one on 22nd Street. The girls that worked at the counter, they used to pay for their jobs during the gambling era because they were making so much money. It was really, uh, I, I'll tell you something. And no one, there was no mobs or anything else that I knew of in any manner whatsoever. Everybody took care of themselves, and everybody made a buck. We want to explore a little more the, the gambling aspect, since that was, uh, back in the day, a big piece of the action going right, on after, here. Right, after 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So if, if you could kind of be uh, descriptive of some of the places you would go and people you would see there and... Well, like Hialeah Racetrack. That was the premier racetrack of the whole country. And you had to, to go in the clubhouse at Hialeah, you had to be well-dressed. You had to have a tie, jacket. The women were always well-dressed with the hats. It was beautiful. So Hialeah, was, when it was open, it was only open for a couple of months a year, you know. Then the other tracks, like we had a track way down the southwest called Tropical Park. And that was just a cheap track. But they used to start out with that. Then we had Gulf Stream, and Calder came later. So we had the horse tracks, and then we had the dog tracks. The dog track here on Miami Beach attracted a lot of people. It used to be filled up. There were probably 10, 15,000 people there at the dog track. And everybody from Miami used to come down there. They would eat in our restaurants. They didn't want to stay at the hotels, except some people that were uh, addicts, they would come down for the season, you know, for the dog track. So we had the dog tracks. But the actual play with the casinos we were in uh, different spots. It was about four or five really great casinos. And uh, they're the ones that really drew the uh, hoya polloi of, uh, of the gambling in industry. And I think it was legit. I think it was legit. I think it, uh, that I don't think anybody, uh, y y you know, was cheating anybody in any manner whatsoever. And of course, it was illegal, but they, the government officials sort of winked at it until Keith Offer came down. And you remember that very well, the Keith Offer. Very well. And was there a panic on Miami Beach? No, then? there was no panic at all. People just, you know, a lot of people don't like gambling. And the people that were a minority of the people that really gambled. But now all the uh, hotels in the cabanas, they always had the big card games where people would pay gin and rummy you know, for a dollar a point, which is very, very expensive, you know, and all that. And they could bet on the horses. There was a Blackstone Hotel down here that's now a uh, refuge for the older people, you know. They used to have in the cellar, they had a huge, huge room where you could make your foot uh, base uh, uh, bets on horses all over the country. They had big blackboards down there that people used to race them to put the odds up, and then you could make all your bets at the Blackstone. It was really... Nice. So just like in the movie The Sting. Exactly. The it was exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing like The Sting. You'd have a, there was a very good friend of mine by the name of Blackie, unfortunately he's dead now, Blackie Unterberg was his name. I changed his name to Blackie Hunter later on, but he used to, he was an accountant. But when he was going to school, he used to work down at the, at the uh, Blackstone on the board. They used to get the odds and everything else at the racetrack in New York or in but it's uh, like a golf, golf stream right now, you know, the, the gambling they have there. You go to golf stream and play Texas Hold'em, and it's right in a room where you can bet all the horses and have your horse track around the country, including Canada. And they're even having tracks now in South America that are now broadcasting in here, so you can uh, bet on those if you want to. And uh, Calder has it, 
but uh, Gulf Street probably has the best array of, uh, they don't have it at the Seminole Casino. They don't have the horse races there. And for someone who likes gambling, you're not in favor of the, uh, the casinos I'm not in favor on the beach. I don't think the beach can handle it, to tell you the truth. But we're too small. Our infrastructure, our roads, things, traveling, I don't think we can handle it. They're going to have gambling. I don't have it in Miami. We'll have the spill over here anyway, I believe.